Hi, this is Jenny Hudson bringing you The Author Connection, the voice of independent authors. And today I have Dr. Timothy Benson as our guest, the author of Surviving Success, which is about to be released. And this is a unique book that is going to help people who have overachieved their wildest dreams. And he's going to tell you all about it. He's a Harvard psychiatrist, and this book is acclaimed by Harvard neurologists to football coaches. And I'm I'm going to have him tell you all about it. So welcome. Birds, tell us why you wrote this book. How did this come to be? Well, first of all, Jenny, I want to thank you for the opportunity to talk about this book. And as I show it, uh, the, the cover, I think, um, uh, well, let me just t start this way. This has been a passion for quite some time uh, of mine in terms of uh, getting this book out and really kind of getting the word out. Uh, one of the things that, the reason that I really wrote this book is, to be very frank, is because I was tired of seeing people only be told about the half-truths of what it means to be successful or what it means to achieve success as well as to maintain it. Uh, we, you know, beyond the glitz and the, gla the glamour that we often uh, associate with success with, there's actually an other side to it. And some would say it's a it's a it's a dark side of success um, that I think that needs to be addressed. And for some of the people who we see on television, some of the demise that we see in terms of the crashes and burns, uh, what we realize is that there are things that haven't necessarily been addressed that were brought out by success that ended up uh, hurting that individual uh, in, in the long run. So. Um, I think here in America, we do an outstanding job of actually promoting high achievement and success, but we do a poor job of actually supporting it. So in essence, what I'm talking about is that we get so enamored in the, the results of the performance, but we start to neglect the needs of the person. And that's what a phenomenon I call achiever neglect. So this is almost a handbook so people can cope with it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's that's terrific. So I am curious, what in your background informed this book? What brought you to this personally? This is a very personal book for me uh, because it really talks about uh, what I learned on my journey. So before all this happened, I was a scholar, athlete, you know, in college, I was a three-time academic All-American, football All-American, and I had won the uh, National Football Foundation and College Football Hall of Fame Scholar Athlete Award, and I was awarded a, a full ride to medical school. So by the time I graduated college, I was riding high, I was on top of the world, you know, ranked as one of the top, scho uh, top scholar athletes in the country. Yeah. However... When I uh, crossed the threshold into medical school, the game suddenly changed. And what ended up happening was uh, the, I felt like the bottom had fallen out uh, in terms of what I had achieved so far. What I realized was that I was, ac I was academically prepared. I was intellectually capable. However, I had not necessarily been aware of or knowledgeable of the psychosocial challenges that often accompany success. So um, it got to the point where I had a major identity crisis. So I was no longer perceived as the scholar athlete because football was no longer in my life anymore. And I had to deal with just being a medical student. I also had to deal with the challenges of no longer being seen as special. So this is something, you know, a lot of the clients that I work with, uh, especially some of the students here at Harvard, they have to start to learn how to negotiate and deal with being the average one percenter when they've been the top of the top all their lives. So this was a part of the issues that I, that I had to face and it almost actually uh, got so bad that I almost dropped out of medical school. And then to top it all off, my mother was diagnosed with a metastatic breast cancer. So I ended up taking a medical leave. And um, if it wasn't for her making me promise that I would go back to medical school, 
uh, I wouldn't necessarily be here today. So that's a part, that's just a part of the journey. Well, that's really interesting. So what are some of the biggest issues that someone might face if they're being successful in their life and, and what, what do they need to cope with? Well, there are multiple issues. Um, one of the biggest things that I work with in terms of the clients that I work with, um, well, let me, let me preface this by saying over the past 10 years, I've been a, a clinical instructor uh, in psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. So this has enabled me to work with some of the top performers in athletics, uh, academics, as well as the, in, the, in the entertainment world. Um, so the, some of the issues that they really face are the issues of, number one, being a target. Once you're visible, you become a target of a lot of attention that could be negative attention or positive attention. So how do you cope with people you know, criticizing you when they don't really know who you are? Uh, how do you cope with um, the projections that people put on with you that may not necessarily fit to, to who you really are and what you really stand for? So you have that. So you also have uh, the increase in demands and expectations that, that uh, happen at that level. And then the competing responsibilities, as well as role transitions that happen with, um, with individuals. So a variety of issues that happen. I would think that it would affect people's relationships a lot, too, because um, people look at them differently and, you know, they're changing and... Well, that's a big thing that it becomes an issue because especially uh, when you come in from, well, in the book I talk about coming from your culture of origin, that's where you're from, and going into the culture of competition, um, and that's where you're at right now. So what happens is that you have to negotiate the losses that actually come with that transition. Especially you have relationship challenges because you may be, let's say, in, in a, a relationship with a spouse or partner and, or, or family members. You may be put in a situation where you're growing much faster than they may be. So that causes a little bit of dissonance. Yeah. Um, so though that's just a part of some of the issues that happen. So do you get involved in any kind of couple counseling with this too? Or is it... Oh, I do. I do. Yeah. Well, it's typical. It, it, you know, what's interesting is that a lot of times, so I work with uh, you know, some professional athletes, and a lot of times it's their significant others that are bringing them in. Ah. Because, uh, again, <laughs> high achievers have uh, a yeah. tendency to you know, have trouble with asking for help, right? Yeah. And even more trouble with receiving help. Oh, that's interesting. So this is a, a pretty unique niche in treatment. Um, and you, you're going to have lots of readers who are going to read your book and want to get in touch with you and maybe be your patient. Are you taking on new patients, or you know? Well, so clinically, I have a, a small, you know, private pay uh, psychiatric practice. Um, that uh, there's a little bit of a waiting list uh, in in that in that respect. But uh, I also have a coaching and consulting uh, business as well. So um, yeah, people can get in touch with me um, uh, again. Um, but it just depends on whether I'm working with them coaching wise versus clinical wise. Well, that's good that's to know. Good. But in the meantime, they can. Certainly read the book and um, maybe it can help prepare them. And um, well, what might one example be of how someone might get prepared for success? Mm. Well, let's take the example of, let's say, being a, a target. One of the things that you, it's important to realize uh, is that there are some mental shifts that need to take place. So instead of personalizing some of the things that are coming your way, what I help people do is to frame it in a way that uh, is less stressful for them. For example, um, a lot of time the criticisms or the attacks come based upon the role that you're playing. You know, not necessarily because of who you are. It's the role that you're in. So helping people kind of back away from or really see things in a certain way help kind of relieve some of the stress that uh, invariably will, will come with high achievement. It's almost like being an actor and having a stage persona or something. It, it, exactly, yeah. exactly. But one of the biggest challenges also is how do you not lose yourself 
in the, the what I call the highs of success. You know, success comes with uh, power and privilege. And some, for some people, it can kind of distort your values depending upon the intensity of, of the environment that you're in. So how do you stay grounded and not lose who you are uh, in this whole process? That's a big challenge for people as well. Right. I love the stories about movie stars that, you know, that still live in the same little house or, or even Mayor Menino in Boston. Yes. You know, he lived in this little house, and, you know, and when he died, there were all these pictures of this humble little house. And, you know, it's interesting how some people are able to stay grounded, but others can't. Well, sometimes, you know, you get swept away, especially if you don't have the type of solid uh, support network um, to kind of help you keep grounded. You know, there, there are a lot of people who have too many yes men uh, around and, uh, you know, that can lead into a lot of trouble. Well, this is really interesting and um, I'm sure there's a lot more we could talk about, but, you know, I, I want people to uh, read your book too and, you know, uh, check out your website. But before we go, is there anything that I forgot to ask you that you want to talk about that I might have missed? Well, you know, I, I do like... You, to talk about one of the, the chapters, which I should have put at put first, but uh, is actually one of the later later chapters, and it's the chapter on grieving and 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 growing. It's how to deal with the losses that that really come with success. We talked about some of the relationship losses, um, but you know there are losses of of confidence. There's there's losses of you know, levels of competence at, at certain at certain points. And how do you kind of grieve those losses? A lot of times that people get in trouble because they're holding on to what was rather than facing what is. So uh, that's going to be you know, learning how to let go of the unnecessary baggage uh, is going to be a, a real important fact, uh, factor in terms of the psychology behind sustainable success. Well, this, this is really great, and I'm sure this is going to be helpful for a lot of people. So where can people find your book, and where can people find you? Well, the book is on uh, Amazon, so they can go to Amazon.com and look under Surviving Success, as well as you can go to my website at DrTimothyBenson.com. Oh, that's great. So uh, I think that is going to conclude our interview, but I want to thank you so much for being with us today. You've been a terrific guest, and so thank you again. And again, I have um, Dr. Timothy Benson. Check out his book, Surviving Success. See you next time. Bye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.